The Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation brings you Crime Photographer. <laughs> Where my niece got engaged last week? Oh, is her name Princess Elizabeth? No, her name's Jane. Then I didn't see it. How do you like that? If you're not royalty, no one knows what happens to you. You don't have to be royalty, Ethelbert. You just got to be famous. Sure, like Anchor Hawking, the most famous name in glass. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Tony Marvin. Every week at this time, the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, and its more than 10,000 employees bring you another adventure of Casey, crime photographer, ace cameraman who covers the crime news of a great city. Written by Alonzo Dean Cole, our adventure for tonight, Self-Made Hero. Casey, like most news cameramen, has a radio in his automobile that he keeps tuned to police calls. Tonight, as he and reporter Ann Williams drive leisurely toward the express building after covering a routine assignment. Calling car 55. Car 55. Come in, car 55. Car 55, Sergeant Brannon. Brannon? Hey, hey we know Sergeant Proceed Brannon. Proceed to a good pal of mine, Annie. I didn't know they had him on prowl car duty. Frisco. Report of shooting there. Proceed to shooting. alleyway shooting. on... Hey, wait a minute. It'll be repeated. Listen. Clark and Briscoe. Clark and Report Briscoe. of shooting there. No further details. That is all. Oh, aye, aye. more Casey like we're only a few blocks from there. Maybe there's a story. With pictures. Next stop, 12th Street. Between Clark and Briscoe. <laughs> usual crowds collected, Casey. And there comes a police car, Annie. We're getting here to jump ahead of Brannon. Get out. Come on. Okay. All right. Get back, you people. Get back. This ain't no service. Oh, there's a patrolman over there, Casey. The young Casey. fellow beside him must have had something to do with the shooting. Why, well, he's just a tall, lanky boy, I Casey. I said get back, everybody. That means you and this lady, mister. And we're press, officer. Oh, you're press, huh? That's right. Uh, well, here comes your sergeant. He knows us. Hello there, Brannon. Oh, hiya, Casey. Hello, Miss Williams. Hello, sergeant. What's the trouble, Johnson? Why, this young fellow here, sergeant, he says someone took a couple of pot shots at him back in that alleyway. I didn't call for assistance, officer, until I'd done everything possible to help myself. Well, let's get inside this cigar store, then it can tell me what happened. Come on, Casey. All right, move back on, there. Move. Let us through, will you? Come on, uh, one side. Now well, then, let's have your story, bud. What's your name? The name is Wellington Cliffside. Only one F in Cliffside. At present, employed as junior pharmacist at Black's 10th Street Drugstore. Uh-huh. I uh, see you carry a camera, Mr. Uh, uh, Casey. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, any time you say, I believe in cooperating with the newspapers. Now, wait a minute. I'm only a cop, but I still want to know what this shooting was about. Oh, certainly, Sergeant. Well, as I've already told Officer uh, Johnson, during the past month, I became suspicious of two men who've been making telephone calls from the drugstore. Mm-hmm. Well, I made it my business to overhear parts of their conversation. And what I heard, Sergeant, convinced me that they are spies. Spies? Hmm, foreign agents. Well, they must have become suspicious of my suspicions. For tonight, they, uh, they acted. Acted? Yes, sir. And a few minutes ago, I was standing there at the corner waiting for a young lady of my, uh, acquaintance. <clears throat> when, uh, these two men passed me. The two men have been making the mysterious phone calls, huh? Yes, sir. I saw them go into the dark, deserted alley back of us. I followed them. Now I know they meant to lure me to my death. But when I entered the alley... He says I... they grabbed him, Sergeant. Let, let him tell the story, Johnson. Yes. Well, they seized me, Sergeant. One of them slashed at me with a knife. Oh, look, you can see the tears he made in my overcoat. Uh, there in the left sleeve, huh? Mm-hmm. And uh, here in the front. The knife didn't get stuck into you yourself? No, no, I broke away and they ran with me in hot pursuit. Uh-huh. Then they pulled guns and started shooting. The bullets missed you. Well, I was lucky. I-, I chased him to the end of the alley. With them shooting? Well, I considered it my duty, Sergeant. Then what happened? Then I found that they disappeared, probably into one of the buildings on the street. I knew I couldn't find them all by myself, so I yelled. Uh-huh. I should say I shouted for assistance. This policeman came up and, uh, well, he can tell you the rest. There ain't no rest, Sarge. 
Except I couldn't find no mysterious strangers around like this young fella described. Okay, Johnson, did this guy show you where the shooting and stabbing took place in that alley? Uh, yes, I did, Sergeant. I'll show you. You again. stay here. Roberts. Yes, sir? You keep Mr. Wellington Rockside Company while I have a look around out here. Come on, Johnson, and uh, show it's me. It's Wellington Cliffside, Sergeant. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Well, Mr. Casey, I suppose you want to take some pictures of me for your newspaper. Mm, yeah, yeah, I think you're worth a couple of pictures, though. Now, uh, hold up that overcoat sleeve to show the tear in it while I back off and get you in focus. All right. That's a terribly phony story that he told, Casey. <laughs> Phonies can make good laugh copy, Annie. Kid's an amateur Dick Tracy. Uh, I'll <laughs> hold out the front of my overcoat, too, Mr. Casey, so you can get a picture of the knife cut there. Yeah, that'll be fine. Okay, Wellington, now hold it. Thank you. Myrna. Look at that girl, Casey. Bobby sucks. Oh, kid. Wellington, they told me how those awful men had tried to kill you. Oh, well, you're not hurt. Oh, well, I, I got the best of them, Myrna. But you can see what they did to my coat. Oh, <gasps> Wellington. Oh, isn't it lucky you had on your old one? Uh, excuse me, Mr. Uh, Cliffside. Yes? Is this the young lady you were waiting for? Oh, when, uh... yes, yes, Mr. Casey. Uh, Miss Williams, Mr. Casey, this is uh, Miss Myrna Adams. <laughs> uh, Mr. Casey is on a newspaper, Myrna. He's just been taking pictures of me. Oh, how nice. How do you do, Miss Adams? I knew all about those spies Wellington was after, Mr. Casey. I was the only one he told about them. Oh, Wellington, you've been wonderful. If they'd hurt you, I don't know what I'd do. <laughs> oh, gee, Myrna, it was... Uh, Sergeant Brandon's coming back, Casey, and there's a woman with him. Ah, Sergeant. Uh, did you find any clues in the alley that might help us catch those spies? Funny, young fella. Is uh, this the guy, Mrs. Levy? That's him, Sergeant. That long string bean of a kid. What? This what? lady lives in the flat building next to the alley. She happened to be looking out of her window when you were cutting holes in your own coat with a penknife. I d All the windows were dark in the alley. The alley was dark. How I got the kind of eyes that see good at night. And why should I burn electricity when I'm only looking out my window? I mind my own business. I wouldn't tell the cops if they hadn't come asking me if I saw something. And she saw you fire those shots. I... I didn't fire any shots. No, but you set off some homemade firecrackers that sounded like shots. Here's pieces of them I found back there. Sergeant, look, I... I... saw you light a match to those firecrackers, young man. Firecrackers? Myrna... There weren't any spies. No one tried to kill you. This was all a bluff. Myrna, look, oh, you, I... you cheater, you cheap rug cutter, you, you firecracker shooter, you faker. You gotta listen to I me. I never want to see you again. Don't go away, Myrna, don't. Yeah, you I... stay here, let mister. Let me go, will you? I gotta explain to what... him. You gotta let me explain, Sergeant, please. She's gone. You've got some explaining to do to the judge after I run you in. Hey, Roberts, make out your report on this guy, and we'll take him to the station. Okay, Sarge, come on. You. All right, all right. Hey, hey, Brandon. Yeah? What, Casey? Don't run that kid in. And why not? Well, couldn't you see he was making a grandstand play for that Bobby Sox gal, and it flopped. Oh, he's already taken one on the chin and hard. Now, look, Casey, we cops have too much trouble with his kind of I know, I know, but do me a favor, will you, Brandon? I'll do one for you sometime. I don't make trades. But I don't get any kick out of pinching goofy kids either. Look, Casey, you can have Wellington Brookside if you only take him away from here. If you don't, well, that mob out there has heard what's happened, and they'll, they'll kid him right. I'll take him away. Okay, thanks, Casey. I'll tell him to get in your car. Hey, what's the idea, Casey? I don't like to see a kid KO'd twice in one night, Annie. Look, and when you get to the office, kid, don't write this story, for laughs or otherwise. I'm forgetting the pictures I took. Oh, I get it. Okay. All right, come on. I'm going to drive the kid home, and I'll drop you on the way. Well, here you are, Annie. Okay. So long, Casey. Goodbye, Wellington. Goodbye, Miss Williams. See you in a little while, Annie. Okay. Hey, uh, kid, is that, uh, that Wellington name? Is that on the level? My name is Jack. Jack? Oh, that's my name. Okay, Jack. I, I, I don't want to bother you, Mr. Casey. It's nobody. Look, forget that Mr. stuff. Just plain Casey's all I rate. Cigarette? Yeah, thanks. I was too ashamed to open my mouth while Miss Williams was with us. Now I want you to know I... Well, I think it was swell of you to talk the cops into letting me go. Uh, Sergeant Brannon was only looking for an excuse not to run you in. He's a regular guy. I deserve to be run in. 
I must have been crazy to think I could get away with what I tried to do. Hmm. Well, all of us are a little nutty at times, I guess. We get over it, though. Hmm. Here's some matches for that cigarette. Huh? Oh, thanks. Pretty kid, Miss Adams. Yeah. Would you like to uh, tell me about her? Often does a guy good to get things off his chest. Yeah. Mr. Casey, I've got a bum back. You got bum back? I fell down a flight of stairs a couple of years ago, and now I've got to wear a steel corset to keep it in place. Oh. Well, your bum back and the steel corset have anything to do Everything. with the... You see, Myrna... Miss Adams admires guys who do things. You know, like Clark Gable and Gary Cooper in the movies. Oh, I see. Yeah. Well, I told her about my bum back. But I said it got hurt while I was playing football. I said I'd been the star halfback in high school. Then she found out I'd never been a good enough athlete to even get on a girl's softball team. And that I just stumbled over my own feet going downstairs. Since then, she hasn't believed anything I've told her. Except for maybe a minute tonight before the cops called my bluff. She thinks I am, well, just what I am. Big skinny clown who can't do anything regular guys can do. Uh, that's out of my own imagination. Hmm. Uh, maybe if somebody talked to uh, uh, Myrna, she might look at things a little differently. Miss Williams might do that. No, Miss Williams is another girl. She couldn't do any good. Oh, you might, though. Me? Yeah, she respects old guys. Uh, old? Well, I don't mean you're so very old, but you must be all of 30. Yeah? Pretty ancient, huh? And you're in the newspaper racket. You must know cops and murderers and... Oh, gee, I bet you've even talked to G-men and movie stars. Oh, Marina will think you're almost as important a guy as, as Clark Gable or well, even Humphrey Bogart. Oh, now, Oh, she'll no, listen no. to you, Casey. Will you go to her and explain that I'm not... Not just a heel... Now, listen, Jack, oh, please, I... please, Casey... Well, okay, fella. Oh, gee. Thanks. It's no use, Mr. Casey. I think it's very fine of you to try to defend Mr. Cliff's side, but I never want to hear his name again. I consider him a drip. Oh, now, look, don't be like that, Miss Adams. He's a nice kid, and he's crazy about you. No, Mr. Casey. He and I are... are through. Forever. Hmm. I'm sorry. Uh, well, I, there's nothing more I can say, so I'll shove off. Oh, don't rush away. You've talked so much about Mr. Clipside, I haven't heard a thing about you. Me? Uh-huh. You've rescued people from burning buildings and captured burglars single-handed and... You're a real hero. Uh, whoever told you that was having a pipe dream. Oh, no, you're just being modest. Like I think all men should be. I... Say, look, where did I put my hat, Miss Adams? Oh, come on. Please sit down, Mr. Casey. Uh, no, And I... let's get better acquainted. Uh... There. I've always wanted to meet a man like you. We'll continue in just a moment. Good evening, Dorothy. Hello, Tony. What's our subject tonight? Pie plates. Pie plates? Mm hmm. Pie plates. Not ordinary pie plates, but a new kind of pie plate. The biggest bargain in years. Why, it's made of glass. Well, this is the Anchor Hawking Program, and this new Fire King oven glass pie plate is something special. For instance, it bakes pie you can be proud of, not once in a while, but every time. Crusts are light, fluffy, and well browned, and never scorched. And it comes clean almost instantly without scrubbing. Well, you've sold me, Tony. Yes, this big nine-inch Fire King oven glass pie plate with a two-year guarantee against oven breakage is being featured tomorrow and Saturday at five and ten-cent stores and all stores that sell household glass at a special bargain price of only 25 cents, uh, slightly more in distant cities. Look for the Fire King label. Ask for it by name. Not just an oven glass pie plate, but a Fire King oven glass pie plate. A product of Anchor Hawking. The most famous name in glass. Give 
Give me a cup of black coffee, Ethelbert. Okay, Casey. You want one, Miss Williams? No, thanks, Ethelbert. Casey, you look like you got trouble. Uh. <laughs> I'll say he has, Ethelbert, in a neat red-headed package. Trimmed with short skirts and a pair of bobby socks, a hero worship complex, and a, a very unbashful personality. It isn't funny, Ann. <laughs> You're talking about a woman, huh? Oh, not a woman, no. A goofy 17-year-old kid that ought to be spanked. Wish I had the nerve to do it. <laughs> She's developed a crush on Casey. Phones him at the office several times a day and waits for him on the street so she can <sighs> gaze at him and... Sigh. Casey, how did you get yourself into anything like that? You ain't no cradle snatcher. Ethelbert, all I did was to call on her one afternoon last week in order to, to well, to try and square something for somebody else. She isn't the girl that Cliffside kid set off the firecrackers on account of. <laughs> That's who. Huh? But Cliffside doesn't know yet that Casey squares things so beautifully. Will you get it, Walter? Yeah, I sure. put off telling him that she won't listen to anything that I say in his favor because, well, he's miserable enough as it is. You know, he phones me a couple of times a day, too, Ethelbert, to ask how I'm making out with her. I can't stall him much longer. Oh, I must have been nuts to get myself mixed up in something like this. <laughs> telephone for you, Mr. Casey. Why, who is it? Uh, uh, Mr. Cliffside, sir. I, I, I thought I was about due for my nightly call from him. He's probably been trying to get me at the office. Well, Annie. since you can't help him, you better stop stalling and tell him the truth, Casey. Oh, I, I can't, Annie. I, excuse me. You know, Miss Williams, Casey sure has a talent for getting himself into situations that ain't too easy to get out. Hello? Casey? Yeah, Jack. How are you, fella? Casey, I... I've just learned the truth. Huh? About you and Myrna. What do you mean? I met her on the street a while ago. She told me nothing could ever be fixed up between her and me and that she was in love with you. Dave, now listen, I kid. I just well stunned you, Paul. Kidding me into thinking you were my friend and then double-crossing me. Listen to me, I've listened you? to you long enough. I called up now to let you know that what you've done is the last straw. When I leave this phone, I'm going to the river. The river? I don't want to live any longer, Casey. I'm going to end it all. You young dope, where are you? Never mind where I am. Jack, I've got to meet you. I've got to talk to you. You and no one else is ever going to talk to me again. I won't be in your way after tonight, Chasey. You can have Myrna. I don't want Myrna. Jack! Goodbye, listen. Chasey. Jack! Hey, kid! Hey! Operator! 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 This is the operator. Uh, look, what was the number that just called here? You've been disconnected, sir. I know that. Oh, never mind. Annie. Yes, Casey? Annie, that darn fool kid says he's going to throw himself in the river. What? Well, he sounded, I don't think he's bluffing. we got to stop him, Annie. You know where he is? No. But there's only one place that kid had picked for a suicide, the cliff at Rocky Point. You mean the place they call Lover's Leap? Yes. Oh, but Casey, that's where I know how up... far it is, Annie. But he wasn't calling from around there because there isn't a public telephone within a mile of the place. He'll have to reach it by bus, but we've got a car. Look, Annie, mm -hmm. I may need you to convince him that I'm not trying to steal his murder. Come on. <laughs> If that crazy kid has picked another spot on the river to throw himself no, in... I'm not afraid I... of that, Annie. What I'm afraid of is we may not get there in time. If he does jump in, I'll be responsible. Now, don't talk like that. It's such a mess of it. No, oh, you have not. It was that little fool of a girl who did that. No, oh, I'd like to wring her neck. Well, there's no use blaming her. No. This is as far as we'd better go with the car. I'll run it off the road among the trees here and turn off the lights. If he saw it, he'd suspect I was after him. Maybe he'd get away. If he hasn't got near ahead of us well, and already... Well, thinking like that, Casey. Let me get out of the car and come on, Annie. All right. We've got to the cliff through these trees. It's pretty bright. we will be seen on the road. Well, this is a horrible, desolate place. Yeah. Annie, we can see the edge of the cliff from here. And there's no one on it. Well, that means he hasn't gotten here yet. They mean he has gotten now, here. Now, will you stop imagining things? Hey, Casey... Someone's coming through the trees on the other side of the road down there. Well, I see. Someone tall and lanky. It's the kid. He's going toward the edge, Annie. Yeah, he sees you. He's running, too, for the edge. Hey, wait, wait, kid, kid, wait. i got to talk to you. No one's ever going to talk to me again. Jack, you've got to let me talk Run, to you. Casey. He's almost at the edge. Hey, stop. We you? can't reach him in time. Oh, he stumbled. Grab him before he gets up. Jack, I got it. Let me go, with you? He hadn't stumbled. He's... He's only a few feet away from the go, ledge. Casey, young fellow, for the scare you've given us, I ought to knock your teeth out. Why don't you stop me? Why do you care what happens to well, me? He shouldn't care. Can't you realize that Casey's only interested in Myrna because, well, he was trying to help you. And let this sink in. If I weren't sure that he couldn't have any romantic notions about a child like your Myrna, I wouldn't be here with him. 
You mean that... You mean that your case is real girlfriend, Miss Williams? Oh, I... Well, use your own judgment, if you have any. I should have figured that. I'm sorry, Casey. Well, okay, kid. Well, now, we're taking you back to town. We'll cut through these woods to the car. All right. I can't stop you from taking me back, but... I still don't want to live, Casey. Well, I was wrong about you, I wasn't wrong about having lost Myrna. She told me herself tonight that she hated me. Jack, there are millions of girls in the world. Must you have just one particular one? I don't want anybody else. Ever. Hmm. Brother, you're a true monogamist. Hey, cars turn into the road. Wait a minute. I wonder if the driver knows it's a dead end at the edge of the cliff. Yeah, guess he's seen where he was heading. He stopped. Hey, wait. Let's see who this is. Hey, Casey. That man getting out. Holding his hands above his head. Yeah. Guy getting out behind him has a gun. Man. That guy with a gun is Blackie Owen. The racketeer? Yes. Don't, Blackie. Don't give me a chance. Don't, don't. Ah! Oh, he shot him. Casey. Be quiet, both of you. Keep back of these trees, out of sight. Okay. Blackie Owens is a dead shot and none of us has a gun. He knew we'd seen what we have seen. Our lives wouldn't be worth a nickel. He's getting back in the car. He's driving away. Wait, don't move from here until he turns off his branch road. Okay, now let's go over and look at the body. Annie, Blackie Owens is one of the dirtiest gang leaders in this town. The cops have never been able to nail him. What we've just seen will send him to the chair and give us a front-page exclusive. Jack, I could kiss you. We wouldn't have been here if it hadn't been for you. Casey, how can you think of front pages when you've just seen a guy murdered? You get used to things like murder in the newspaper racket. Uh. Hmm. Well, there he is. Well, uh, do you uh, recognize him, Casey? I certainly do. Well, that gives me a good reason not to be too unhappy about this shooting. The guy who just had his last ride was Twist Yakov. Well, he was Blackie Owen's chief gunman. That's right, Annie. Blackie gave it to him right between the eyes. He... He's dead. As a last year's daisy. Never seen a dead guy before. It's awful. Yeah. Remember that the next time you think of bumping yourself off, kid. Now, come out of the car. Let me get a camera and shoot some pictures of this. There'll be no ah, pictures. What? Casey. Hello, Blackie. Stick up your hands. All of you. Okay. I wouldn't have come back if I hadn't seen your car parked off the road after I turned the bend. It gave me the idea that there might have been witnesses to what occurred here a few minutes ago. And I don't want witnesses. He's going to kill us. Take it easy, Jack. <laughs> the young man, unfortunately for all of you, is right. You see, I prepared a very good alibi for this evening that your testimony would kind of spoil. <laughs> I'll give you all your choice. Where would you like it? Between the eyes, like Yakko, through the heart or in the stomach. <laughs> you know, I pride myself that I never miss. If it's all the same to you, Blackie, I'd prefer not to be shot. Oh, uh, Casey. Uh, yeah, you should have known better than to stand so close to a guy you meant to plug. You got his gun, Casey. You got his gun. Yes, Casey. I have. Now, Blackie, we'll go to my car and get a camera and take some nice pictures of you. Uh, now, you... be good. Stick your hands in the air and get going. Okay, but don't you want this... What are you picking up there? Huh? Can't you see? A pair of gloves. The lady dropped them when she stuck up her hands a minute ago. No use leaving them on the road. Yeah, miss. Oh, yeah, they are my gloves. Hey, Casey! He's grabbed Let her go! Drop that gun you took from me, Casey. If you try to shoot it, you'll have to shoot through this team first. He's holding her in front of him. Let me go! Let me go! I always carry two gats. And you gave me a chance to get the second one, Sap. Go. Now drop that rod or I shoot this dame. Go on. Drop it. You win, Blackie. Ah, I thought I would. Now get over there with your friend, oh, lady. Right. I want to see you all in line like clay pipes in a shooting gallery. You're going to be first, kid. Me? Yeah. And you get it in the belly. <laughs> Jack! I killed him. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Guess I'll save you to the last, Casey. Lady, you're next. I'm going to make this shot for sex. Right between the eyes. Those shots! Casey. 
Blackie's fallen. I shot him, Casey. I got him, Miss Williams. Oh, Jack, Jack, you Jack, shot him. The bullet he shot at me hit the steel of the corset I wear for my back. I glanced off. But I pretended I was dead, and I, I fell close to the gun he made you drop, Casey. I... Oh, I, 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 I've never shot anyone before. Boy, I'm glad you shot somebody this time, kid. I am a hero. I am a hero. <laughs> Join the crowd with the blue note in just a moment. Extra, extra, read all about it. Great new discovery makes beer and ale easy to enjoy. It's a new kind of bottle. A different kind of bottle. It requires no deposit. No fussing with pennies. You don't have to return it. No bother with empty. Just pour out the beer. And throw the bottle away. It's light as a feather. No arm-weary lugging. It's sturdy and compact. Saves space in the icebox. It's easy to open. And safe to drink from. It belongs on the table. It's at home on a picnic. And brother, what flavor? That true brewery flavor. Protected by glass. As only glass can protect it. Yes, the revolutionary new Anchor Glass one-way no-deposit bottle is sweeping America. For flavor that's brewery bright, demand beer in bottles. For safety and convenience, demand your favorite brand in the new Anchor Glass one-way no-deposit bottle. Product of Anchor Hawking. The most famous name in glass. Say, Casey, didn't you and Miss Williams kind of overdo that stuff about Wellington Cliffside in this morning's paper? No guy's ever been that much of a nature's noble man. <laughs> Boy, you'd have thought he was if you'd been there, Ethel. Oh, I'm standing in our exact spot. Oh, well, maybe you're right. How did it go down with his girlfriend, who wanted to be Casey's girlfriend? Uh, huh? Swell. <laughs> she was, you know, she was barely civil to me when I saw her today with Jack. I understand they're engaged, too. Well, as my sister Edna says, quote, the only thing wrong with the younger generation is that it grows older. Unquote. Unquote. What does that mean? <laughs> Prime Photographer, starring Stotts Cotsworth as Casey, is brought to you each Thursday by Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation, makers of Fire King Oven Glass, Anchor Glass Containers, Anchor Caps and Closures, all products of Anchor Hawking, the most famous name in glass. <laughs> Prime Photographer is directed by John Dietz. The original music is by Archie Blyer, and the program features Miss Jan Minor as Anne and John Gibson as Ethelbert. The part of Jack Cliffside was played by Jack Grimes, and Herman Chittison is the Blue Note pianist. This is Tony Marvin saying goodnight for the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, with offices in all principal cities of the United States and Canada. Thursday night on CBS is the biggest show in town. So stay tuned for exciting dramatizations on Reader's Digest Radio Edition, which follows immediately over most of these stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.